The FAA's incompetence has once again been exposed. Not only does the issue extend beyond the cooling steel plate or the sonic booms, but now the FAA is also struggling to assess Starship's new thermal protection system, or TPS. So, what is it now? What problems do the FAA have with Starship's new heat tiles? And how does this impact the progress of Starship's launch schedule? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The tension between the FAA and SpaceX has intensified following the defense given by FAA's head, Mike Whitaker. The false claims he made have infuriated Elon, who posted on X, he needs to resign. Underneath this post was news of Whitaker's impeachment after being confronted with SpaceX's evidence. Additionally, several mainstream news outlets reported on the incident, accusing Mike Whitaker of lying, which led to significant doubts about his leadership of a government agency. More and more, we're witnessing the bad of the FAA and its management department through their work. Recently, in response to the question of whether SpaceX could use the waiting time for a launch license, which included the catch action to conduct another flight for, the FAA replied, The FAA requires a license modification if an operator proposes a change that is material to public safety. A change is material to public safety if it alters or affects the following class of payload, type of launch or reentry vehicle, type or quantity of hazardous material, flight trajectory, launch site or reentry site or other landing site, or any system, policy, procedure, requirement, criteria, or standard that is safety critical. Just from reading this, we can already see the answer from SpaceX. Of course, they have no other option but to wait for the launch license until November, because even the smallest change to Starship's new heat shield could impact public safety. A proposal to conduct a return to the launch site for the booster if the FAA has not previously evaluated and authorized it for prior flights is a change that is material to public safety. A change of a vehicle's thermal protection system may be material change if the TPS is a safety-critical system or component that could affect public safety. Well, I don't know if you guys feel the same way I do, but I think that's a load of BS. First, it's clear that the FAA is not just about spending an additional 60 days investigating the catch of Super Heavy B-12, but also investigating the new heat shields on Ship 30. Does that mean they're lying about their investigation timelines in reports, hearings, and to the public? Second, if the launch were conducted like Starship's Flight 4, both stages of the rocket would have to land in an uninhibited ocean area. So, does it truly relate to public safety like the FAA says? So, nearly everything a space company does, from processes to part changes anywhere, down to the size of the pencils used in the office, could somehow be described as affecting public safety, and as a result, could be indefinitely blocked by the FAA. Another clear example demonstrating the incompetence and buffoonery of the FAA and its unnecessary environmental investigations. If you agree with this, comment yes, and if not, please share your personal thoughts below the video so we can talk about it all together. Unable to endure the situation, SpaceX President and CEO Gwynne Shotwell has now also criticized the government agency. As a member of the Texas Space Commission, Shotwell told the House Appropriations Committee September that SpaceX does not have specific issues with Texas regulators, but is experiencing problems with federal entities. Shotwell expressed concern that government bureaucracy is hindering progress as the company works to continue launching its massive Starship boosters from South Texas, as well as other operations. This is not an issue for our competitors overseas, she said. It's an issue here in the United States. And that's undeniable. Honestly, SpaceX success is built on rapid iteration and development. And delays due to these regulatory processes could really slow down progress. There may be a perception within the company and among supporters that the FAA is being overly cautious or simply does not fully understand the complexity of SpaceX's tech. This situation highlights a bigger challenge for emerging technologies. How to balance the need for comprehensive safety oversight with a pace of innovation. It raises critical questions about whether current regulatory frameworks are equipped to handle the rapidly evolving nature of modern space companies without slowing up their development. However, the solution may need to come from more government agencies as they represent the outdated methods of a bygone era. Just five years ago, spaceflight was not a routine activity like other modes of transportation, but it's becoming more common. In recent years, the number of space launches to orbit has increased every year. SpaceX flew 94 times in 2023 and plans to launch 150 times here in 2024. So far, SpaceX has done over 90 orbital launches, accounting for 93% of all worldwide launches. 
That's a launch schedule every four days, and that's becoming increasingly difficult for the FAA to manage this very busy pace. SpaceX took two years to get a license for the first launch, several months for the second, and now the fifth launch. SpaceX is eager for the government to move as quickly as they do. If you can build a rocket faster than the government can manage it, that's a reversal that probably needs to be talked about. So it's clear that the government agency definitely needs some regulatory reforms of their own. There needs to be some level of prioritization for programs of national importance. For example, launches supporting Artemis. One would think that such launches would get handled in maximum efficiency, all within the context of ensuring public safety. SpaceX's Starship program is ambitious, with plans for dramatically lower costs and much bigger payloads to currently inaccessible destinations throughout the solar system. But SpaceX seems far from an operational cadence that would bring those goals within reach. They like to begin deploying their next-gen satellites specifically designed for launch aboard Starship and also fulfill their promise to bring humans back to the moon. In 2021, NASA gave SpaceX a $2.8 billion contract to develop a lunar lander based on their Starship architecture to put humans back on the moon. SpaceX's success would mean progress for NASA and the United States' goals for the Artemis program, and the company believes that a slow certification process is hindering national interests. During a Senate hearing in October of last year, SpaceX's VP for Build and Flight Reliability, Bill Gerstenmaier, urged Congress to streamline regulations and increase the FAA headcount for a faster issuance of space launch licenses, emphasizing that the office needs at least twice the resources they have today. Gerstenmaier was the former chief of human spaceflight over at NASA. SpaceX thinks that the FAA's workforce has not increased with the boom in launch cadence. The FAA's space division has been calling for more resources for several years, but with little luck. To get Starship's launch license, the agency had to shift the resources allocated for SpaceX to support the operational Falcon 9 launches, meaning that Starship's fast pace began to interfere with the company's Falcon missions. SpaceX was competing with itself to get more launches. Ever since its inception, the FAA has licensed over 634 launches, 34 of them being commercial human spaceflight missions as of this episode. After the Senate hearing earlier this year, lawmakers from the U.S. Senate Space and Science Subcommittee pushed the FAA to accelerate the approval of commercial launches, citing the space race between the U.S. and China now. In response, the FAA is working to hire additional staff and prep for a substantial increase in launch cadence in the coming years. But recruiting high talent has been pretty difficult. The GEO mentioned in its report that in one instance, the FAA didn't get an adequate candidate pool for four out of ten human spaceflight-related positions for which it had already been actively recruiting. Over half those came from NASA, having had the experience in crewed flights via the commercial crew program. The best people with a recent knowledge and experience of human and non-human spaceflight are the ones that are actually working in the industry themselves, and that makes it pretty hard for the FAA to hire them. The agency also created a new aerospace rulemaking committee to streamline the launch and reentry licensing process. The committee will work in tandem with the industry partners and help the FAA review and approve spaceflight activities as quick as possible without compromising safety. It's evident that with future flights, the FAA is aware that Starship will likely undergo numerous design changes, further increasing the agency's already growing workload. However, the outcome seems to be heading nowhere. Despite assurances from Kelvin Coleman, the FAA's admin for commercial space transportation, that they would collaborate with SpaceX to ensure regulatory oversight has minimal impact on launch ops while still maintaining their stringent safety standards, the reality appears quite different. Instead of streamlining the process, the FAA seems to be overcomplicating matters to the extent that SpaceX considers many of these interventions unnecessary. Starship's constant evolution and its cutting-edge tech demand regulatory flexibility, but SpaceX argues that the FAA's excessive caution is actually stifling progress. What was supposed to be a cooperative effort has instead turned into a bottleneck, frustrating not just SpaceX, but also highlighting the need for the FAA to rethink its approach in this rapidly advancing industry. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you back here next time. Bye.